So I've been looking into the options for whitelisting in Coinbase Standard, not Coinbase Pro. And I've so far, I've had some issues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through the process of whitelisting, which requires us to go into Coinbase Pro. I'm going to show you exactly how that works. So it's very simple, but I'm going to see if by whitelisting in Coinbase Pro, it should automatically whitelist stuff over in Coinbase. I'm hoping at least. Um, if not, um, you'll learn how to whitelist in Coinbase Pro, and then you'll watch one of my next videos on moving from Coinbase to Coinbase Pro, which is my preferred trading area. Uh, it's a lot more advanced, and you get a lot better opportunities over in Coinbase Pro, which I'm happy to discuss in the next video. So let's get into taking a look at how to whitelist in Coinbase today. Okay, so I'm back in Coinbase and I've looked all over for a way to whitelist. And if you don't know what whitelisting is, it's basically blocking all addresses, so all wallets across the world from receiving any Bitcoin or tokens from your Coinbase account, except for the ones that you designate. So it's why they call it a whitelist. It's your literally putting a list together of approved wallets that you can send money outside of Coinbase to. Okay, so I think we've defined that. Now I've searched all over for a whitelisting feature in Coinbase, the standard edition of Coinbase. Many of you probably don't even know that there's a pro version of Coinbase. I seldom do anything in the regular Coinbase anymore. I do everything in Coinbase Pro just because it's a more advanced environment, uh, offers a lot better opportunities, far more granular charting, far more real-time data, and it's actually cheaper to trade over in Coinbase Pro than it is to trade in Coinbase. So all these things being considered, I prefer Coinbase Pro. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try to walk you through the process of going over to Coinbase Pro, whitelisting, and seeing if it actually carries back to the actual Coinbase account. I'm not sure, so this is a test. Follow, follow me if you wish. Um, if it doesn't yield the results, I'm not promising that at this moment. So if you wanna turn off this video, I guess go right ahead. But uh, we'll go through this journey together otherwise and hopefully, uh, hopefully the results will be exactly what we're looking for. So let me go ahead and get started. Now what I'm gonna do is I in the URL of Coinbase, I'm gonna type in pro dot coinbase.com and hit enter so if you've been enjoying this content and getting value out of it please don't forget to like and subscribe and even comment below i'd love to hear your feedback so i know how to make these videos better for the future this is going to take me over to the pro coinbase interface now sometimes it will ask you to log back in all you have to do is hit the login or sign in button and you're already logged in. When you own Coinbase, you also own pro.coinbase. So you have accounts in both areas. You don't have to go sign up for an account over in pro. You automatically have that capability. You can see now I'm in the pro environment. It might be a little intimidating for some of you guys to look at this. This is real live trading data. Um, you're seeing things that are happening here. I think it's a heck of a lot more fascinating. It kind of reminds me of that scene from The Matrix with Cypher, you know, where he's looking at the screen, he sees all the text coming down. He's like, oh, here's what I see. Blonde, redhead, brunette, right? And it's really cool. And you're like, how does he see that? Well, he's been looking at it for so long. So for me, this is the preferred environment because I can see exactly what's going on. I know how to manipulate stuff. I can get cheaper trades. I can get faster trades. I can do more with my trades in terms of how I want to set trading parameters. It's just way more flexible, but it's not for the faint of heart. It is absolutely an advanced or expert level environment and uh, takes some getting used to, but it's definitely something that I hope to take all you students from basics to advanced, and that's where we're hoping to become crypto masters. Eventually, I want all of you guys over in something like Coinbase Pro. So uh, we'll get you there eventually, but for today, we're gonna go ahead and explore how to whitelist, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on my profile, it gives me all these options and I'm gonna say address book. Click on 
I'm going to click on address book. Your address book lets you save cryptocurrency addresses that you are that you've used frequently. After you add an address, you won't have to manually enter it every time you make a withdrawal. Okay. So you can add a new address right here. And this can be an external wallet, most likely is an external wallet because you don't need to when you're transferring assets between Coinbase Pro and Coinbase or vice versa, you do not have to set up the wallets. Those transfers happen automatically. So um, I can add a new address here, but here's the key. Um, I haven't yet implemented whitelisting. And what's interesting and what Dean brought up in a prior video that we made earlier today was, well, if I turn on whitelisting, which I'm gonna do right now, um, the question was, will it keep all of my assets my crypto safe? And I had to think about it for a minute. And I think the answer to that question is yes. If I don't set up any wallets for crypto to go to, then it's impossible to get money to move out of my hot wallet in Coinbase um, on over to any other wallet. So with whitelisting turned on and no addresses set up, I think that's actually the most secure way of doing it. But the cool thing is, even the addresses that you're gonna put in here are ones that you approve and only you have access to. So if you put those in here under whitelist, you should be equally as safe, but to Dean's point, I'd be even safer if I had no wallets to transfer this stuff to. So if it's not your intention to transfer this stuff out, well then I would turn on whitelisting and protect myself to the max because anyone can come into your system and if you don't have whitelisting turned on, they could enter the wallet. Let's say they cracked your password and somehow they got through 2FA if you have it, um, if you have it on. Um, and then they get to this point, they can literally transfer all of your crypto right out to a wallet that they designate. They can put as many wallets in here as they want without whitelisting turned on. There's not going to be any safeguard for that. You're not going to get any notice. It's just going to go out the door and you're going to be done. There's no way to recover that uh, once it leaves your Coinbase account. I don't want to scare you guys, but I think it's worth noting that turning whitelisting on, you can probably tell by now, I think is one of the single most important things you could do in Coinbase. Uh, sadly, I don't see it available in Coinbase. It is here available in pro.coinbase.com. Again, those two things are connected and I'm trying to prove if I turn it on here, will it actually affect me back in the regular Coinbase? And my hope, that I hope that answer to that question is yes. Now I'm gonna read this real quick. Enable white address whitelisting. Whitelisting is a security feature that limits withdrawals to only the addresses in your address book. Adding a new address to your address book will take 48 hours. Disabling whitelisting itself also takes 48 hours. These are huge security things and are very positive for you, but they can be very annoying and inconvenient if you're not aware that they exist. And if you don't do the right things, when you set up right whitelisting. What you wanna do is you wanna get your accounts in there right away because they do, when you create it, uh, you have eight hours to add as many new addresses and disable whitelisting immediately without the 48 hour security hold. Another reason you wanna do this yourself and not have a hacker come in and do this is because you don't want them to do this, right? So anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and enable whitelisting. Now, if you watch my video and you probably came here from that video you just learned how to enable two-factor authentication using google's authenticator i have to authenticate right now so looking up my code there we go now i have the next eight hours to add new addresses instantly which is fantastic um i think i'm going to go ahead with uh no addresses for now because I think this is a feature that I'd like to come back and show you guys when I explain wallets a little bit more and transferring money back and forth from wallets, how we do that. Um, so for now, I'm just gonna leave it blank and I'm gonna come back in another video and show you uh, how to add wallets and addresses in a future video. That sound good to you guys? I hope so. Because the whole point here was I wanted to prove whether or not this would impact me over at uh, Coinbase. So now that I've set this, I've got eight hours as it says, and I'm gonna go back to Coinbase. Okay, so in this instance, I'm going to 
send and receive. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to send, uh, instead of Ethereum Classic, I'm going to send, I'm going to send Ethereum Classic, my bad, I'm going to say $1 worth, and I'm going to give it an Ethereum Classic um, address. Now, I don't need the note down here. It says not to discuss how to send money between wallets, but in some cases you do need a message down here. I'm not going to provide one. Um, I've provided it with a private um, address that I have in cold storage. So I've enabled, remember I've enabled whitelisting. I'm going to hit the continue button. It says you are sending... And right now, it's making me believe that whitelisting is not enabled. But I do remember I have that eight hours. So I'm just wondering if, um, if that has anything to do with it. Or if indeed, this is an open hole in the Coinbase system for me to uh, get tripped up by. Um, so kind of disappointed in this uh, feature. Um, not being universal between the two, Coinbase Pro and Coinbase. That being said, I'm gonna go ahead and just send the dollar anyhow. Um, here we go. Sending crypto is reversible, blah, 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 blah. Send now. Okay, they want my two-step authentication. That's fine. Again, my previous video, you learned how to do that. Your send failed. The recipient address isn't whitelisted. Okay, boom. This is what I was trying to prove. If you stuck with me, we just hit pay dirt, as they call it. Um, so, success. This is really a key right here. We just won. Um, I, was, I was thinking in the back of my mind as I was just producing this video over the last few minutes, well, what if there was a hole in the security with Coinbase? And clearly... There is not a hole. In fact, they're redirecting me back to the address book in pro.coinbase.com. Now, had I not done that, I'd never run into this problem. I could freely send to any address that I put in here. But since I just initiated whitelisting, you can see that this creates an amazing firewall for my crypto. Um, I guess that's the best way I could put it. It's a firewall for your crypto. So you want to be your own bank, which you already are. Um, you've, you know, if you've been watching my videos, you created a solid password recently for Coinbase, one that's super strong, because uh, I gave you the directions on how to do that. And then you enabled two-factor authentication. Um, you enable that using Google Authenticator if you're following my videos. Um, if you want to be super secure about it, you're doing it on two different platforms. You have your cell phone as your authenticator, and you're only doing your trades on your desktop. And we're talking about people who want to be super secure as opposed to being quasi secure. And then the final piece, which I think, forget all the other stuff, um, whitelist, 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 whitelist. If you turn on whitelisting, as I just demonstrated for you to do today, you are going to be is about as secure as you can be in Coinbase um, and Coinbase Pro. But uh, this is perfect. This is exactly what I was hoping to see. Uh, it's not for everybody. Uh, make sure you understand what you're doing here. If you are trying to send money to friends on a regular basis out of Coinbase or you like to move money in and out of Coinbase uh, to random addresses, this is not for you. But if you like to take your money that's on Coinbase and move it to addresses that you know you're going to be moving it to, let's say you have... Uh, a friend or a, a family member that you send crypto to regularly or an account that you send crypto to regularly, you whitelist it. Once it's whitelisted, you won't have any problems. You'll always be able to send to that address. Um, that is key. Um, it's the key to securing your crypto because that you cannot make a mistake. You cannot just send your crypto to somewhere else without being met with this message. I highly recommend it if you're not, again, sending money to random wallets all the time. I don't know anyone that sends money to random wallets, but you know, maybe not in this country at least, uh, but maybe in other countries 
this is pretty pervasive where people use cryptos as their currency. Um, we're not quite there yet, but eventually we will be and there'll be more solutions for it. And I think if you want to secure Coinbase, the best way possible is to absolutely enable whitelisting. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for today. Um, I'll go back in another video and I'll show you how to add wallet addresses uh, because we need a wallet that's external to Coinbase to be able to show you that. And I'm going to start adding wallet addresses and I'll probably show you that with how I do cold storage, which is going to be a really the next level of security. So I just showed you for hot storage and hot, hot wallets, which is what Coinbase is. It's a hot wallet, what that looks like. Now I'm going to take you into the world of cold storage using a tool like this. This is the Ledger Nano X. And I'm going to go over this in detail with you guys so you can understand how to secure, secure your cryptos like a pro. And I would highly recommend this for anyone that has more than a few dollars in crypto. This is a very, very worthwhile investment. And I'm happy to show you guys how all that works in the next, in the next couple of videos. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon.